In this video what I want to do is show you how to use the Minecraft map exporter to take a Minecraft map into Bryce for rendering. I've chosen this exporter here because it supports the most up-to-date type of map and also Windows and Apple as well as Linux but I don't know I don't think you can run Bryce on Linux so it's a bit of a redundant point but here's the exporter this is the uh, address you can use to find it on the Minecraft wiki and I'm just going to launch Minecraft now to show you the uh, the map we're in and then we'll look at uh, navigating to where the save file is and uh, and looking at this so this is the world I've created I'm just going to go into that world show you what's happening Won't take a second okay here we are in this world I can see it's snowing there's a hole in the ice just there that's where a creeper exploded and there's my workbench, a chest, and uh, there's a torch over that doorway just to orientate yourself in the world. So I'll just uh, save out of that, save and quit, quit the game. Okay, here's the exporter. Now it's uh, it's been installed. So I'll just double click on that. It runs on Java, and your first challenge is going to be to navigate to where your save is. And I'll I'll go through that because it's a little bit fiddly. So let's uh, let's say we're starting here at the uh, the uh, desktop or, or wherever so let's see well, you've got to find your well in my case the C drive but where users is then your username then the app data then the roaming folder then the Minecraft folder so open that one up and then you want saves and you need to go into whatever you've called your world so I've called this one my world to make it um, click on that folder there don't rename it and then when you've got the data dim dim one players and region you can choose that as a saved folder and in that case then you can load the map so the, the map loads in and uh, the uh, the red cross is where I was currently stood and the green cross is where I spawned and so you just uh, use the mouse pointer place it in a corner hold the left mouse button down and drag and drop and that allows you to select an area for export then you click on the export button and what you need to do here is show the export options and currently I've found that uh, render world size and bottom help render biome selected render entities although I've not been lucky enough to capture an entity yet I'm hoping that'll be like spiders skeleton zombies that sort of thing create a separate object for each material this this is needed to work for Bryce or so it seems do not allow duplicate vertices it just makes sense and then you export that so it doesn't take very long to export and if you look at the top left hand side here these are the two files have created the object file and the material reference file for that object file but you need the material files now if you there's another button here show texture options I don't have any of these boxes selected um, I've not played with that so it's just going to export it to wherever you've decided to send it in this case I've sent all mine to the uh, desktop so that I just browse that out and send it to somewhere where you can find these files and just click on the word Minecraft and that will export a folder here you can see it appearing with the textures and there's the export progress right now here's a critical step to save yourself a lot of time which I failed to do the first time I uh, did this experiment take your object and material uh, named Minecraft and drop them in to the texture folder now take the texture folder and put that somewhere you can find it so I'm just putting that uh, in a folder on my desktop on the other side there because I'm going to open Bryce now so in Bryce it's just the default uh, setting I'm going to select the ground plane and delete that and then go file import object navigate to where I've saved that text folder and then look for the object inside it that I placed there and open that and you want object group materials select that now the first time you do this it often comes up with an error I don't know why this error comes up because it's it's looking inside text inside text but that's daft because it doesn't need to do that because we've put everything together so you just need to navigate to where mushroom brown it'll be a different one each time so go OK so it's here so you can just open it and then it just brings everything in so there we go we've got our map now okay it's near, nearly done I'm just going to rotate it around 180 degrees so it's uh, it's orientated correctly I don't know why something on the import there things get turned around and have a quick render 
So uh, the, the materials have been applied, and also the materials have got alpha lamps, but the alpha lamps haven't been applied yet. And what I've found is that this is the first time I've found this useful. I can go into, if you've got the, uh, the, the graphics card to do it, textured shaded, and you can actually have a pretty good preview with that. And that gives you a guide as to where things need correcting. So I'm just zooming in now, looking down onto the world. So there's that hole in the ice just there. There's my workbench chest and there's the the torch over the door. So a few of the materials need their alpha maps associated with them, like these trees. So if I, um, I'm not used to selecting this, you hold control key down and select leaves pine one, and then go into the material lab. What I need to do is set the transparency, because you can see the alpha channels there, and then just set blend transparency very simple and then we can see through the trees. Uh, for this torch over the door there's a couple of things there like the torch over the door we we'll just uh, select torch go into the materials again and go blend transparency transparent there we go we've got our torch and the torch has got a little flame associated with it so you can go select torch flame go into the material lab and in this case I'm going to go and use ambience and also do blend transparency and set transparency and then if I go into sky and fog here I can increase the global ambience so I can actually have that uh, that flame lighting up so that's the render there's no light getting in that corner of the world at the moment if I move the, t the sun around you can see it does and you can see now that that flames actually glowing on that torch so that's just uh, that there's a few other things you might choose to modify in that way like the lava for example there's the lava I'll just render that bit there so you can see it as it stands we could we could go into the lava material modify it give it ambient from the um, the texture component there and then turn the ambience up and then that would give be in position to have glowing lava which well depending on what sort of uh, render mode you're going to use like trambians you could actually have that lighting the environment up so the, you just need to go through and find the materials where they need to be transparent and it's fairly obvious because you can see these billboards like the grass and and these things then uh, then you just need to modify it. Uh, I'll just switch back to the standard wireframe mode in case you don't have the graphics card to do that and show you what it looks like working in this view. You need to identify where these things are because it's a bit confusing then look for say dead shrub that's that cross there and then go into the material lab and it's the same process blend transparency pop the transparency there and you've got yourself your shrub sorted out. Like I say I've not uh, I've not spotted any entities in here yet in the wireframe view in this in this particular wireframe view it's probably easier to spot things you can see the torches running down on the inside it's all a bit sketchy I know and somewhere in there there might be a creeper or a skeleton or a zombie or something along that a spider I would want to pick out but uh, I've just not been lucky enough to find one but there you go there's a there's a quick way of importing your Minecraft maps and uh, and just a guide on how to sort the materials out. I mean if you wanted to go a bit fancy you could select the water material and actually make it transparent as it is in the, in the world and you've got the options there to do that if you can find it. So there's the water material so there's the water material that's its alpha channel which in this case isn't very helpful you just make it transparent or you could add refraction to it if you wanted to make it more water like so or something like 133 would be water or 154 I'm not really sure and then you can choose different levels of transparency or colour for it which might give it a nicer watery effect it just thinks something to experiment there so now it now reflects the environment the same goes for the ice so there you go, I didn't want to go on too long uh, as is a tendency in a lot of these videos so I just thought I was an interesting for those of you interested in Minecraft then uh, that's the way you can import a Minecraft map into Bryce and uh, set it up for rendering I'll just I'll just apply some fancier light into this for the uh, the final image I think. Okay then.